Hi, this is Max at Gage Motorsports, bringing you the uh, first part of a series that we're going to call Things to Consider When Building or Modifying an Engine. So today, we're going to be talking about how much lift should I be using in my cylinder head? Or how much lift will this cylinder head take? I get a lot of phone calls going, you know, will, it, will my head uh, take a half inch lift? Well, that all depends. Here's what you really want to consider. And this is one train of thought. A port will only flow so much. And I hope you all can see this well. Uh, this being the port here and the valve seat and the valve. We're going to call this the intake valve for now. So the first question is, is how much lift should I have? So <clears throat> the cam that you're going to choose is going to be uh, part of all your decisions. How much lift should I have on my cam? What ratio rocker should I be using? to get the maximum horsepower. So let's talk about how much does a particular port flow. And based on that should be, the answer to that should be how much lift should I use. And there's a reason why you want to go to no more lift than you need. And that reason is spring pressure and valve float comes into play at some point. So let's just uh, take, make uh, some, some measurements on a particular port. Now I made these up, I just pulled the numbers out of my hat, but let's assume that these are the numbers that you're going to be looking at. So at 050 lift, you have a 35 CFM. At 100,000 lift, you have 50 CFM. So there's a 15 CFM increase with a lousy difference of 50 thousandths lift. Now you go to 150 thousandths lift and you still have a 25 CFM increase, which is a nice increase. So now you go another 200 thousandths or another 50 thousandths, now you're at 200 thousandths lift and you just picked up another 10 CFM. That's still something that will show a market difference in the results on the racetrack. So now let's say you go to another 50,000, now you're at 250,000 lift, you're at 95 CFM, so that's another 10 CFM, that's a good deal. So now you go to another 50,000, so you're at 300,000 lift, and you're at 105 CFM you picked up another 10 CFM. So now you go to 350 thousandths lift and you've only picked up 4 CFM. You're at 109 thousandths lift. Alright, so you check it to 400 thousandths lift, another 50 thousandths, so you only picked up 2 CFM. So based on that, I would say your maximum lift should be somewhere around 300 thousandths lift to 350 thousandths lift at the most. And here's the reason why you don't want to go anymore. First of all, you're only picking up a couple of CFM between 109 and 111. That's a 50 thousandths lift. That means you've got to open that valve 50 thousandths more to get something very little in return. But in order to go that other 50,000, you've got to add more spring pressure to keep your valve from floating and to get it to close as quickly as possible. That extra spring will take um, more horsepower to open and close 7, 8, 9, sometimes 10 or even 11,000 times per minute. So if you're just adding 10 pounds to the spring pressure times 10,000 times a minute, 
how much horsepower is that going to take? So the recommendation here is to maybe just go to about 300,000 lift. That's it. So now, <clears throat> how much spring should you use for that? My rule of thumb is I start with something a little bit heavier than I think I need. So let's say I put in 38 pound springs and I find out that the valves aren't floating at the RPM that that engine peaks out at and that's going to be based on the cam. But once I know the peak RPM, as long as my valves aren't floating, what I'm going to try now is I'm going to go to the next lighter spring. And if they still don't float, I'm going to go to the next lighter spring. If they float then, then I'll go back up to the spring pressure I had before. So now I'm using the least amount of spring pressure required to keep the valves from floating at the maximum engine RPM. <clears throat> the least amount of spring leaves you the most amount of horsepower to use to get to that back wheel. Okay, so now <clears throat> we've talked about how much lift we should have and how much pressure we should have. Now the maximum lift, that's going to tell us what cam to get or at least the maximum lift on the cam or if we're going to use a ratio rocker <clears throat> and we'll talk about what ratio rockers do to duration and cam once we get into cams, okay? And I think our next video is going to be about cams, or at least cams 101. So here we're going to go to a maximum lift of about 300,000 something based on these numbers right here. Sorry. And uh, so, but now what about the exhaust side? Nobody ever really talks about the exhaust side. Now what you want to think about is on the exhaust stroke, your piston is coming up creating <clears throat> some pressure to push all that exhaust out the exhaust port. And that valve is open, letting all this stuff out. Think about this. If you took the spring off of that valve right now, on that exhaust stroke, if you remove the spring, that valve is going to want to close anyway. Because all the pressure going out, all the velocity of all the exhaust going out that exhaust port is wanting to try to push that valve closed. If you think about that, the only spring pressure you need on that valve is to hold it closed during the other cycles, uh, the other three cycles. <clears throat> the cam opens it, the spring closes it, but the exhaust valve velocity is doing a lot more work than the spring at that point. So I would say think about using a lot less spring pressure on that exhaust valve. And the less spring pressure you need, the more horsepower you got. The less horsepower you're going to need to compress that spring 7 to 11,000 times a minute. Okay, so that concludes today's episode of uh, how much lift should I have, how much spring pressure should I have on both the intake and the exhaust, and how much lift should I have. And the lift, again, boils down to where that intake port stops performing well. As soon as you reach a, P, a point where the next portion of the lift, the next 50 thousandths, doesn't give you any return. 109 to 111. That's 2 CFM. You're not going to notice that on the racetrack. There's no point in lifting that high. Okay? So, <clears throat> play this over again. Share it with your friends. In the meantime, our phone number here, if you have any questions, always is area code 702-845-7181. And you can call between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m., East Coast time, not West Coast, even though that's a West Coast number, it's a Nevada number. I am in Connecticut, and this is East Coast time, so if you call me West Coast time, 
I probably won't answer in the evening because I'll be asleep. Uh, so until next time, uh, and the next episode, by the way, is going to be about uh, the basic introduction to CAMS, and we're going to end up having a series on CAMS so that we can get a complete understanding of not just lift and duration, but what all of that means. Um, lobe center lines, CAM center lines, changing those center lines. What does all of that mean and how does that um, <clears throat> react in your engine? How does that change the performance of your engine? And how does it change the, the uh, RPMs where your power band is? All of those things come into play with the CAM. So we're going to start talking about CAMS 101 on our next uh, installment. Until then, Gage Motorsports and Max signing off.